It's a breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We do have Okunabon Kataria who joins the conversation as we take you through the pages of the National Dailies to be precise, uh, the front pages. Okunabon, it's good to have you join us this morning. Good morning, Messi. Good morning, Justin. And good morning, Nigerians. But can you hear? Sure. Yes, we can hear you loud and good clear. Good morning to you. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look at the Daily Independent this morning. The banner caption says, foreign airlines blocked funds climbed to $300 million. Carriers stop lower classes fare, approach black market for Forex. No ticket sale in dollars. Uh, that's what you find. Uh, these are some riders. No ticket sales in dollars. Nigeria violating the Basar Agreement. Uh, find that who's saying all of that. These are the head... Um, I mean, the riders underneath the bold caption this morning. Presidency blames Matthew Coker, Buhari's opponent for late fighter jets delivery. And 2023, Aisha Buhari wants women adopted as running mates to candidate. Interesting. APC presidential primaries. How vi um, Vice President, of course, Yemo Sibandro, fire me. Amoshun will cut Tunubu's Southwest delegate votes. Uh, I take that again. How Vice President Yemi Osibajo uh, fire me, Amoshun will cut Tunubu's Southwest delegate votes. Sarah drags Buhari to court for failure to unblock 72 million uh, phone lines. This is what you find here this morning. An Imo refinery explosion. Buhari orders clamp down on perpetrators. Nigeria needs economy fixing. Uh, that's what uh, Peter Obi is quoted to say. PENCON approves what? Acquisition of IEL Anchor Pension. Buhari paying lip service to fighting insecurity and corruption. Valana is quoted. These are the headlines on the Daily Independent. Away from the Daily Independent, we'll move on next to the leadership newspaper this morning. And making front page, uh, Northern uh, PDP consensus, Ango Abdullah on his own, um, over Saraki by last choice, Baba Ahmed. Uh, Northern PDP consensus, Ango Abdullah on his own, over Saraki by last choice, Baba Ahmed. Is quoted as saying on that one. Uh, low capitalized insurance face business restriction. Uh, more stories on the front page. Bandits kidnap Kaduna lecturer, driver, demand 100 million naira ransom. Other stories on um, the front page of the leadership newspaper. Abuja Airport to introduce uh, park and pay. All right, troops kill 25 ISWAP a terrorist in Lake Chad. World Malaria Day. Nigeria seeks inclusion in vaccine uh, rollout. Uh, presidency knocks the uh, U.S. for always predicting Nigeria's collapse. Uh, those are the main stories. Okay, let's see. Uh, we can get one or two more. Uh, troops killed 25 ISWAP terrorists in Lake Chad. Those are the main stories on the leadership uh, newspaper this morning. Let's take a look at the Punch newspaper. Consensus plan for Jonathan on Settles APC. Tinubu or Sibajo Cams orders kick. Uh, this is what you find. Definitely, you have groups calling for the former president to contest for, um, to, you know, come back as president 2023. Jonathan's, Jonathan's backers in dilemma over APC's past attacks on ex president fear rejection. As far as looking for consensus are lazy, nobody will impose candidate. Uh, you have uh, Bola Ahmed Tunubu's group saying, the vice president will emerge candidate, supporters. So it feels like there's a clash of supporters. I mean, supporters from different camps. Uh, you also have Yahaya Bello will beat good luck Ibele Jonathan. Uh, the campaign council is quoted to say, so there's a lot uh, right here. Buhari orders arrest of Imo illegal refineries operators and PDP orders fume over killings of 12,250 APC. 
uh, his mum in all of this. Lawan, Aregbe Shola, others mourn. They are laughing. Bajabi Amila's chieftaincy installation suspended. Federal government records 2.23 trillion naira fiscal deficit in three months. This is according to reports from the Central Bank of Nigeria. And just before we move away from the Punch newspaper this morning, no Asso Rock cabal can impose president on Nigerians. Ayum is quoted to say, uh, that means uh, you probably have cabals. So the conversation about cabals been going on, and people would say, who are the cabals? But it's obvious that there might just be cabals in Asso Rock. Asso faults federal government's negotiation may continue uh, strike. Asso faults federal government's negotiation and may continue the strike. This cause reject 2,495.3 megawatts in one week. Uh, that's what the federal government reporters quoted to say. And Lagos traders protest 600 million naira lost to Ponza scheme. Businesswoman remanded. Well, we hope Nigerians learn. Uh, presidency accused Matthew Cooker, others of blackmailing Nigeria in the U.S. Lagos Rail Project will be completed in the fourth quarter of 2022. Um, you have the governor of Lagos State quoted on that. These are the headlines on the punch. And finally, the Nation newspaper. North's elders are split over PDP consensus candidate uh, with a writer there, NEF's Unongo Ahmed Difa. Uh, three crushed to death at Undo police checkpoint. Uh, foreign investments drop. All right, uh, more stories. Alafin's unfulfilled plans. Aborted visit to Oni's palace, chieftaincy titled for Bajabia Mila, a gift of furnished houses to wife. Uh, above the masthead, INEC raises security red flag, 42 attacks in 14 states. Death toll rises to 130 in Ebo explosion. Buhari orders operators arrest. Uh, Macron forced French president in 20 years to win re-election. Congratulations to him. Federal lawmakers abusing their offices, ICPC alleges. All right, on the red strip there, NDLEA seizes cocaine hidden in tea bags at Lagos Abuja Airport. Those are the main stories on the front page of the Nation newspaper. Okunabo Kataria is on standby. I mean, he joins us uh, this morning. It's good to have you join us once again. Yes, thank you, Messi. All right, let's start off with the Punch newspaper. And uh, looking at the story or the caption on the Punch newspaper, it talks about Jonathan and the fact that his, uh, I mean, consensus plan for him unsettles uh, several camps in the APC. This, this has been in the speculative. But do you think that this is actually a reality or might be a reality? Well, I can't say for now. I can't, I can't really ascertain the veracity otherwise of that uh, um, uh, story. Uh, let's not forget that it is one story that has been trending the air for quite some time. And good luck, Jonathan himself, has been uh, equivocal on this particular issue. And they said that even the last time some people approached him, uh, calling on him to confess, they said he was still cogitating, he was still thinking about and I was going to rebut. This happened, I think, just last week. So, I think there's a lot of pressure on good of Jonathan to contest, both from the north and from the south. The north, for a different reason, so that the south will compete with Kenya. And uh, for the south, it's as if you denied our brother a second chance, so go back and contest. And this call is as if we are saying great, man, it's more pronounced because of the bad leadership that we are having. When you compare the Jonathan administration with that of the Buaris administration, you can you, you I mean nobody needs to tell you that Jonathan's administration was far, far much, much, much better than this present administration. So I cannot for now tell you if Jonathan is going to confess. But the fact that there is a lot of pressure on him, that is the fact, because I saw him on telly and telling to them, telling them that he was going to revert when he takes a decision on whether to contest or not. 
They did not outrightly say we are not going to contest, which simply means negotiations are going on. That is that is what I can gain from it. Because if he wasn't going to contest, he would have said, I'm not going to contest. I'm not interested. But for him to say, okay, he's going to think and get back to this, which means negotiations are going on. So the outcome of that negotiation would determine whether he was going to contest or not. I don't think he would want to go for primaries. I think that's what he's trying to avoid. He might not want to go for primaries. He might want a situation where he will just emerge as a consensus candidate, so that not as if he went for primaries, he will go for primaries and fail. Excuse me, he wants to emerge as a consensus candidate. And um, he probably needs more assurance from Mr. President, because Jonathan is actually going to negotiate with the President and nobody else. So he actually needs more assurance from Mr. President that if he gets in there, he's definitely going to win, so that he's not going to disgrace again, as, 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 as the case was in 2015. But that assurance is neither here nor there, because with what INEC has in place and with the new electoral act, the Nigerians are going to speak. And we believe that the votes shall be the reflection of uh, the uh, referendum, that shall be a referendum of the, uh, of the approval of Nigerians. That is what they say, the vote they cast will be reflected as cast. All right, um, Oponabo. Uh, let's just uh, look at another angle to the whole Jonathan and consensus uh, issue. You know, there has been, you know, talks and uh, reports of uh, the APC trying to, you know, lure or lobby uh, the former president, good luck, Jonathan. You know, how does this really meet you? look at it, judging by the fact that uh, he is with the opposition, PDP, you know, on what moral ground would he have if he were to join the All Progressives Congress? Well, uh, talking of morality, <laughs> in Nigeria, do, in politics, do we talk of morality? We don't talk of morality in politics. It's compromise. Uh, we think more of what we are going to get. When Nigerians are more egocentric, that's why they're Nigerian politicians. So you talk about morality, forget that. If he's assured of getting that ticket, and if he believes and has a conviction that he's going to win the election, even if he's going to be on YPP, he will move to YPP, he will defend to YPP. So the issue of morality does not even, I mean, Nigerians don't even bother. It's not an issue to Nigerians. Uh, especially the Nigerian politicians. So let's not even talk about morality. And I tell you, all those that might even criticize him for jumping ship, we will be the election, will be the first to comment and praise him. They will glorify him. That's the kind of uh, politics we play. The moment if he's jumping, they want to condemn, criticize him, escalate him for why you do so, this is a shame. The moment he wins the election, those same persons will come and congratulate him. They'll be the first to congratulate him. They say, oh, you are God's sent. You are the old one that's called the savior of Nigeria. That is what happens. So in Nigerian politics, nobody talks of morals. You are not what it talks of morals. All they right. think of the stomach and pastor. All right, let's, move, let's slide into the nation newspaper right now. The main story for them this morning. But sorry, yes. sorry, Justin, uh, sorry, quick one, Justin. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. In a civilized climb, in a civilized climb, in a civilized climb, yeah. this will not happen. Yes. yes. All right, thank you. Uh, let's uh, see the nation newspaper now. North's elders uh, split over PDP consensus candidate. There seems to be a whole lot of talk uh, as regards uh, this issue of um, consensus uh, candidate. And right now, the PDP and North elders, you know, are uh, actually splitting on this particular issue. Uh, Nefs, uh, Unongo, and Ahmed are differing on this particular issue. What are your thoughts, Upunabu? Well, uh, these things are expected in politics, you know. Mm. Uh, politics is all about interest. And so the, poli the politicians, the presidential aspirants, have been going around the country campaigning. And definitely, they are, most of them will not just go around to campaign without greasing the palms of certain persons. And so certain persons are conflicted. They are already compromised. And in order to prove to the aspirant that you are working for him, you come on there to say something. Because the more you shout, the more the pocket is filled. Right now, this is, it's, politics is like a great train to a lot of people. In fact, to almost everybody, let me put it that way. You know, so now you have factions. It is normal, I'm not saying it's abnormal. It's, you lobby. lobby. Lobbying is well allowed, it's, it's legitimate, it's, it's, it's legal. You lobby. So, when you lobby, of course, there are going to be divisions. 
If, for example, you have 10 people in a room and you have about four candidates, it depends on first your perception of the aspirants, then two, the aspirant that will perform more. These are the two major factors. Not necessarily what the man will come to do. Your perception. Is this man this? Is this man like this? I cannot approach it. Then number two, you discuss with the aspirant. When you get in there, what am I going to get from you? What are my chances? Will my son be a minister or will I be a minister? Will I get this contract? You know, there are so many variables. Mm -hmm. And these are the variables that lead to this case, the division. And so whenever you have issues like this, it is extremely difficult for a body to come out with one voice on an issue. You will have those split, especially when money is involved. They will, they will split. And that is what is happening right now. So it's nothing abnormal. It's quite normal. It's quite normal. All right. Let's take a quick look at the punch again. And uh, this time we, take, we look at the concerns of ASU and the federal government. Now, ASU is complaining that they're not satisfied with the way uh, the government is handling negotiations. More like uh, the attitude is not challenged. And uh, they're already in the 10th week. The strike would definitely continue. It's very sad, my dear sister. Extremely sad that... Uh, we are now, the issue of education has been relegated to the background. Even the Minister for Labor, who is the chief negotiator, is uh, uh, going around campaigning for uh, uh, the president. So that will tell you the kind of country, you know, where you maximize the minimum and minimize the maximum. And you think Nigerians, uh, Nigeria will move forward. It's not possible. On the issue of uh, the strike, I, you know, I said it on this station and on so many other stations. I said, first, I blame Asu. You go on strike. After some months, you call up the strike. Without the federal government meeting those demands, the next time you go on strike. So most of us now impugn the sincerity of Asu. We see the issue of, we see those issues raised as special reasons, as a small screen to further or line their pocket. If they had allowed this thing, because right now, even the federal government is more interested in politics. As for Mr. President, I don't think he even knows what is going on in this country anymore. Now, if you had uh, continued your strike two, three years ago, probably by now the issues would have been resolved. Having said this, anyway, it is so sad. I listened to Igigi. He was passing the ball, putting the blame on ASU, that they set up a committee, and ASU is not willing to submit itself to that committee. That was what he said on the sister station. You know? So, I will call, I will call the, while I call the federal government to address this ASU issue expeditiously. Because if problem is going to create, it's something that might end up consuming this nation. These are children that are out of school. They might be tempted to do certain things. And even the election we are talking about might not go. That is the truth. On the other hand, I'm also pleading with ASU not to call up the strike. Because if they do, then they should never go on strike again. Let us resolve this issue once and for all. Once and for all. I don't know why the federal government, are, they are talking of money, but every time they spend money, we give money to foreign countries. Was it Afghanistan or whatever country, they don't have many millions of dollars. We spend money on uh, uh, tourism, uh, health tourism. We spend on, on frivolities. Frivolities. But they don't want to address the issues of lecturers because most of them don't have their kids here. It's extremely bad. And you, most of the graduates we have today are not even have dates anymore. Most of them are not even dates in any form. Listen to a graduate speak. And you wonder, you marvel why these are the problems. People, intelligent people, don't even want to go into lecturing anymore. They leave the country. There is brain drain because the reward here, the remunerations are not. Enticing. It's, 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 it's a complex situation. So the federal government must address this issue. And expeditiously too. And also should not call up the strike until the issues are met. If they call up the strike, then they should never go and try If they do, the students should beat them. They should beat them because they are using them to trade. All right. And also should not call up the strike. All right, Open Let's uh, move on to other stories. Uh, 
also uh, making front page uh, on Daily Independent uh, newspaper this morning. There are several stories, but let's uh, take uh, the Sarah again is dragging Buhari to court this time around um, over a failure to unblock 72 million phone lines. Uh, what are your thoughts uh, as regards that one? Uh, a court case uh, right now, Buhari is being dragged to court as it is over this uh, SIM NIN uh, linkage. Well, uh, uh, if they see, you know, they did this SIM, this. Uh, uh, SIM uh, registration it was ideated to checkmate fraud and criminality. That's the whole lesson, you know, so that you can be trashed. So, and they gave enough room, enough time, the moratorium, and they kept expand, extending and extending and extending. Sarah, is between the limit of Sarah, the right, the price of Sarah to go to court. Anybody can get up and go to court. It is the court that will decide whether the suit is frivolous or not, if it has merit or not. That the court will also decide that. So Sarah can go to court. There is no problem with that. But I don't think, rather, Sarah to uh, plead with Nigerians to go and register. Where the government will be culpable if, if they make the registration process difficult. That is where the government will come from. The government will ensure. It should just be like walking into a shop to buy something. Just like you could walk into uh, one of these uh, service providers to get a SIM card before now. It should be as easy as that. I don't know why it will be so difficult. You know, probably it is the difficulty in having it that Sarah is questioned. Probably, I don't have details of it. But... I will call on the federal government to please make sure these things are easily accessible so that Nigerians will go without wasting of time. You just walk in, get your registration, and you leave. It's as simple as that. If the federal government does not do that and the process is frustrating, a lot of people will be daunted. A lot will be daunted. You know? So, but again, I blame Nigerians. You know, I said it the last time. I said, let us learn to be proactive and go about it. The average Nigerian waits for the last minute rush, which is very wrong. All these issues that they are signposting now are issues that would have been signposted long before now and addressed. The pressure they are mounting now is the pressure they would have mounted long before now and not after the deadline. Why wait for the deadline? That is my own problem. That is, that is where I have my issues with Nigeria. But the federal government will ensure that these things are easily accessible. You don't frustrate Nigeria. No, if, if you want to go, my help, my house help, said she went. She's gone there two times. They kept telling her, come on Monday, come on Tuesday, come on Wednesday. Why? Why should that be the case? Probably it's on that ground that Sarah is going to come. These things are not easily accessible. Why are you going to frustrate Nigeria? Because it has a domino effect. When you ban this like this, that's the dominate in terms of business, in terms of connection, in terms of a lot. All so right. if these things are not available, then I'm banned. And when they are available, then you can ban. Probably that's why Sharap is going to come. I don't have the details, but I believe if I, from extrapolation, that's why Sharap is going to come. But yours is the unbanned. So now, let the federal government unban. Since the process is frustrating. Then after now, we give maybe two months, three months, and also ensure that Nigerians could just walk in, just like you walk in to get your cookies. Walk in and get registered and you walk in. So there's one ban for now. Because from what I gathered from my house, she said it was extremely difficult and they kept telling the communists to go to come to the And even though I queried, I said, why didn't you go before now? Why do you have to wait until they buy your lights? But it, the deal has been done. All right. Nigerians should, um, the federal government should give a, 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 a grace, give us at least one or two months grace, and ensure that people will just walk in, get it done, and walk away, not to go and spend hours there. But, but one would rather also think that, you know, the federal government should allow this process to be a continuous process because, um, you know, I don't think it has to be an endless process. Every other time you have people I, I, I uh, coming agree. into the I country. You, I mean, you have people you. who are being born. It's a lot. It should be a continuous process. I agree the with you, should encourage people. I completely agree with you. But then, eh, you, know, you know the smart there. 
Um, if you make it a, 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 a continuous thing, it's like voter registration, you know, they, when, you, when they started, they had deadlines and so on. Now it's a continuous thing. Now, if you make it a continuous thing now, I bet you most Nigerians will never register. But, but you know, that open up one Qataria as... Don't, don't forget, to, there, there is no, there is no ban. Even if you buy your SIM today, you can't register. That's the truth. It's not as if they say, the, in, after this deadline, if you buy today, you see, if you buy a new SIM, why not? You can't register. The issue of moratorium, the moratorium was for those that already had the SIM before this law came in. We're, we're in critical I mean, times. Today, we're in register. critical times where communication is very effective. And if you even want to begin to probe, uh, you I want to probe, you. you know, the rationale behind all of this. It hasn't really been effective. It hasn't. But it's not an excuse not to have, you know, a, a national identification number. I and like I would you. mention, yeah. this process did not start now. I, I, the, the entire process, the entire system itself has not even been efficient, like you have rightly mentioned. But we need to move away from this. And let's take a look at the leadership newspaper. Now, on the leadership, it talks about the presidency faulting the United States for always predicting Nigeria's collapse. <laughs> I remember in 2015 you know, where it was predicted not, that Nigeria is a failed state and, and he got a lot of, you know, he got the presidency reacting, he got stakeholders talking and we have always uh, anticipated and looked at the point where Nigeria will break away. But the presidency has faulted that and says um, it's not very pleased with the fact that the U.S. would always uh, uh, fault, um, you know, and predict the collapse of Nigeria. What are your thoughts? Well, uh, the issue of prediction is planned on uh, so many indices. Uh, what they see, you know, I mean, you know, like I was, our, the, the political engine is overheated, social climate, the inflammatory, economic atmosphere is highly combustible, the security level, I mean, has taken a, a fighting dimension, killings every day. How else are you going to predict a field state? How else? How, what, are, what are the other indices of a field state? The Boko Haram insurgents, uh, terrorists have taken over most of the most of the local governments in the north, uh, being controlled by these insurgents, and they give directives, instructions. How, how else do you describe a field state? So, on a daily basis, the tenuous legation of the encasement called Nigeria is threatened, are threatened on daily basis. So what else is the first thing? That is why America is saying is predicting the, the, the extinction of the country called Nigeria based on the available. Risk. Let me tell you, Americans know this country more than even Mr. President, even more than our security chiefs. They know the place. You can imagine what happened when they came to release an American. How many hours did it take them? Bam, boom, bam, boom. They know this place more than their, their, their president, more than the, they would tell you, uh, the, uh, the American government can give you details of what is that. Invite the American government to do with Boko Haram. Just give them just two days and you see what will happen. Look at how they do to, uh, 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 what's his name, uh, uh, this, uh, this man of all, that was killed. I think it was, on, it was uh, uh, Obama. Please, if you can remind me that, that man's name that was uh, killed. They use the seal. Osama bin Laden. Look at Osama bin Laden. Look at what America did in uh, the Amis town. 90 minutes at 10 seconds. You don't, you don't joke with such things. They, they, look, they know the country more than you, even more than the president, even more than our service chiefs, more than our SSS. I can tell you that. So you don't just dismiss what they say. You can't, you can't trivialize what they say. You can't treat it with negative. They are predicting God is saving us. God is just saving this country. The country has never been more divided in, in, from, from 1960 to today. It has never been more divided. And that is their fear. So if these predictions don't come to pass, we thank God. We thank God. But you have crisis in the East, crisis in the North. What, could you tell me? What, so, what, what is the government saying? What, what, what is the government saying? What is the government saying? Okay, they said 2015. If Jonathan, if Jonathan had not surrendered, had not uh, agreed to the loss, there would have been bloodshed. That's why we should commend Jonathan. And he said it, he said he foresaw it. 
And that was why he just agreed. That's why he said yes, sir. He said he pursued. Because they, was it not the same one that said that they fit bamboos and whatever we put in their own blood? They were ready. They were prepared. Uh, open up on Qatar. Yeah, no, 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 so no, 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 you are not completely wrong. You are not completely wrong. Go for Jonathan's uh, 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 intervention, uh, the last boss intervention through Jonathan. Thank you for being part of the show this morning. Uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And you have a great day ahead. Thank All right. you, my dear. All right, it's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Away from all the press, we'll go back this day in history and check out what happened today. And when we return, we'll be taking our first conversation. We'll be going to Emo State to look at what happened over the weekend, the uh, illegal refinery explosion. All in a moment. Stay with us.